guys, uh, Caitlin here. Um, just hopping on live for our monthly Facebook Live. Still at home, um, not with Clara, unfortunately. But I hope everyone is doing well. This month we are talking on the blog about um, women's health and in particular balancing out hormones and fertility. So I thought I would kind of run through some of our fertility foods, foods that we believe help fertility, um, and also some eating patterns that can help with your cycle. So to start, um, we have a couple blogs that have gone up this month, um, one of which our fertility series parts one and two went up earlier this month and they are great blogs. So definitely head over to our website, check them out if this interests you. Um, but one of the things that can be really helpful for fertility um, and just hormone balance in general. So if you're trying to work on your cycle, for example, um, balancing out your hormones outside of fertility, this is helpful for you. But that would be fat. Uh, making sure you're eating enough dietary fat. So um, avocado, nuts, seeds, vegetable or plant-based like oils like avocado oil, olive oil. Um, fat can help with hormone production and balance. So you wanna make sure, I recommend getting some form of fat at every meal um, and even incorporate it in your snacks. So fat is important. Um, another aspect is timing of meals. And a lot of women who don't necessarily have, you don't have diabetes or don't have PCOS may not think about stabilizing blood sugars, uh, but the timing of your meals can be helpful for everyone across the board. So trying to eat more frequently throughout the day, um, small meals and snacks, or at least not skipping meals. Um, a very common dietary pattern these days is intermittent fasting and really probably isn't great for um, our hormones. So I definitely recommend meals throughout the day and that they're balanced. So eating mostly carbohydrate foods, um, pieces of toast, for example, for breakfast, um, without any protein or fat is not gonna necessarily set you up for the most balanced blood sugars or just fruit. So maybe having a cheese stick or some nuts with the fruit as a snack. Um, that can be really helpful to just stabilize those blood sugars. And then a third thing that people don't necessarily think about is gut health. So um, our gut can be really helpful for cycle regulation. Um, it's useful in the metabolism of hormones, getting rid of excess estrogen. So we don't normally think about fertility cycles and gut, um, but they're definitely related. So if you're having like IBS symptoms or anything like that, there may be something going on um, with your gut and it warrants some intervention. So you definitely want to talk to your dietitian um, about specific recommendations for you and your gut um, symptoms. Okay, the other aspect, we are going to be making something today, actually two things um, that we will get to in a second, uh, making a smoothie and making a quesadilla. So um, we'll get to that. Now, Micronutrients are also important. So it's not just about like making sure you're getting your macronutrients, meaning, meaning carbs, protein, and fat, those three macronutrients as a balance. Um, again, keeping your blood sugar happy, enough fat to um, produce hormones, um, but also the micronutrients. So that's like the vitamin C, vitamin E, K, D, folate, all of those um, nutrients. So some that are particularly helpful for hormone regulation are vitamin C. So that's gonna be in like citrus, um, bell peppers, broccoli, kiwi, tomato. Um, what we believe is vitamin C can help actually trigger ovulation. So if you're struggling with anovulation, for example, vitamin C can be helpful. I should preface with this list that if you are Thinking about supplementation, I would definitely talk to your doctor or your dietitian before starting any supplement regimen because it may not be right for you. These are general recommendations. Um, vitamin E is also helpful for cycle regulation. Um, so that's going to be in vegetable oils, nuts, sunflower seeds, spinach, 
um, things like that. Keep looking over here because I have my notes. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, vitamin E is helpful. And something interesting about those fat um, soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K, is they need fat to be absorbed. So if you're eating something like spinach, for example, um, or drinking milk that has um, vitamins A and D in it, um, the fat component of that food or adding a fat helps you absorb those micronutrients better. Um, the next nutrient is zinc. Uh, zinc is going to be in oysters, beans, lentils, pumpkin seeds, cashews, um, and asparagus. So that's helpful. Folate, we all know about folate. Um, that's why we're always told to take that prenatal um, multivitamin. Um, it can help reduce the um, likelihood of neural tube defects. I always recommend finding one, um, a prenatal that has methylated B, uh, methylated folate, uh, in versus folic acid. Uh, folic acid is synthetic. Methylated folate is ready to be used. Our bodies use it better. Um, so definitely ask your dietitian about where to get a methylated B um, prenatal. That being said, even if you are in that preconception area where we're, what we're talking about now, um, I would already be on a prenatal or a good multivitamin that has those methylated B vitamins. Uh, sources of folate, beans, peas, lentils, eggs. Uh, let's see, vitamin B deficit possibly does it cause neuropathy? So just had a quick question, so I was gonna stop real quick. Um, it's possible, I know one specific nutrient that can help with neuropathy has been alpha lipoic acid. Um, again, I would consult with your dietitian before starting any type of supplement, but we also have a great micronutrient deficiency testing available. Uh, it's called SpectraCell, where we look at all of your B vitamins um, to see if you do have that deficiency. So that's really the gold standard for us of recommending supplements because we know that you are actually deficient in those nutrients. But that's a good question. Um, so we just talked about folate, omega-3s are really um, great for hormone balance, so fatty fish, flax, walnuts, um, if you don't eat a lot of fatty fish, there are some great fish oil supplements on the market. Um, I like Nordic Naturals is one that I typically recommend, um, here it is, I'll just show you my big bottle of Nordic Naturals, I get it at Wegmans. Uh, magnesium is also one that doesn't get talked about as much, but it's actually really helpful for um, hormone balance, progesterone and estrogen balance. So almonds, spinach, cashews, uh, pumpkin seeds, something that we're going to be using today, cacao has magnesium and avocado, also we'll be using that in a recipe today. Whole milk or full fat dairy is another food that um, can be helpful. Uh, some research studies have shown a um, correlation of full fat dairy intake and less, so more full fat dairy, less frequency of infertility. Um, so I definitely recommend getting that full fat. Um, we'll be using some full fat kefir in our smoothie today. Um, again, that has the fat. That fat's going to help you absorb those fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, so um, we talked about gut health. So I just mentioned we were going to be using kefir um, in our smoothie. So that is also a great source of um, healthy gut bacteria. So I'll just show it to you. Kefir, it's a little bit more concentrated in those um, live cultures than just regular yogurt um, and it's kind of got like a looser consistency so it's good for the smoothie um, and also a good source of protein so other fermented foods that are good for gut health um, sauerkraut kimchi um, kombucha so adding those in um, can be helpful and then another supplement that is interesting is melatonin we normally think about melatonin as a sleepy time uh, supplement, but it's 
it may help with egg quality um, and it kind of has antioxidant properties which is good for the ladies um, some research may um, show it's not so great for men in terms of fertility so definitely chat with your dietitian about that okay I just ran through a whole bunch of micronutrients but just to recap vitamin C vitamin E zinc folate omega-3s and magnesium in particular and then we've got full fat dairy fermented foods and melatonin yes Paul loves sauerkraut it's a great for gut health um, so I grew up having sauerkraut and pork chops um, as part of our Thanksgiving dinner um, not sure where that came from okay let's get into making our smoothie so this is the only place in my kitchen where I could cook and also make a smoothie so you're actually sitting in my cabinet my phone is sitting in my cabinet so you won't be able to see everything but I'll hold stuff up so I have my blender when I'm adding a bunch of ingredients that just need a little bit of extra help blending I use my high-powered blender it's a Vitamix I love it um, but if I'm using things that aren't don't need as much blending like some banana some kefir and maybe some powder of some sort I like to use my immersion blender actually this is only a piece of it but it comes with this cup I put the ingredients in the cup and then it's missing half of the blender because it's in the cabinet but you just blend it like that um, and that's really easy because this just is easier to clean I know how much of a pain it can be to clean the blender but today we have some things that kind of need to be chopped up um, and blended better so I'm using the Vitamix first and foremost I like to put the liquids in um, that's gonna help the blender turn better so if you start with like chunky stuff solid stuff um, you may need to get down there and move stuff around but I have about, yeah, about a cup of kefir and again I like to use um, plain uh, full fat kefir I also just learned this year that's that but that is how you say kefir I definitely called it kefir for a long time um, but about a cup of kefir um, and then I've got some mm, this is about a quarter cup of full fat milk um, doesn't have to be milk it could also be water almond milk um, coconut water something to give just a little bit more liquid um, to help it blend better uh, next up we're going to do oh, there's just so many good things going to the smoothie I have some banana so I took a couple whoop, I just dropped some banana on the floor okay we're doing a little less banana than planned um, got some frozen banana in there um, I like to when my banana start to go bad um, not bad just they get really spotted and dark uh, my husband won't eat them and I I don't know so I cut them up and I put them in the freezer and once they're frozen I stick them into a silicone baggie and just let them hang out in the freezer until I'm ready to put them in a smoothie I'll do the same thing with avocados as well so if I have an avocado that's going bad and I don't think I'm gonna get around to eating it um, I will mash it with a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice and then stick it in a baggie and stick them in the freezer and that can go into smoothies too okay so kefir milk frozen banana this one's a little weird um, but these are frozen cauliflower stems so when I'm cutting up cauliflower to roast um, you could definitely just leave this in and roast it as well but I don't like to waste anything so I cut up the stem and I stick it in the freezer and that it just blends really nicely into smoothies gives it that cold consistent mm, texture cold is not a texture temperature <laughs> but a nice creamy consistency along with the banana and cruciferous vegetables are great for gut health um so got the the cauliflower in there and then i just grabbed some frozen berries uh, these are blueberries nice dark um, fruit is good for antioxidants um, you know the color like if you think about eating the rainbow and the different colors of fruits and vegetables one color that we don't get a lot of or there isn't very much variety for is that dark blue purple color so that's why I really like to incorporate blueberries when I can and I always get frozen because they're cheaper so we got the berries in there 
This is when you can kind of um, change things up. Oh, almost forgot the spinach. I mentioned spinach being good. Uh, this is ready to go bad, um, so I'm just gonna throw in the last handful of spinach. Sometimes if I don't get to a bag and I can see it starting to go bad, um, I will just toss the whole bag in the freezer and then I'll use it for um, smoothies in particular. I don't really like when it um, defrosts for like recipes, but um, I definitely like it for smoothies. Okay, got some spinach. Now, I like to add cacao powder sometimes depending on the flavor profile. I mentioned that cacao um, is a good source of magnesium. Slightly different from cocoa powder, uh, it is less processed differently. Um, so I like to use this particularly for smoothies. Um, I use like Hershey's cocoa or something like that for baking. Um, so I'll just add a tablespoon of cacao. Um, now, if you don't want it to be chocolatey, you don't have to add the cacao. Another thing I'll add sometimes is cacao nibs. I just ran out, um, so I can't show you, but that's also like little pieces of cocoa bean. Um, they're a little bitter, so if you're like eating them by themselves, <laughs> they're kind of rough. But if you add them into granola, like a granola recipe, or if you add them into a smoothie, or I'll top like some banana and peanut butter with some cacao nibs, um, I like it like that. I also have a jar of milled flaxseed. This is a really smoothly milled flaxseed. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit because the nut butter that I'm using actually has some flaxseed in it too. Ground flaxseed is great. It, um, it's better absorbed, uh, better utilized. And um, yeah, sometimes I recommend getting the flax and then grinding it yourself if you have a good like coffee grinder or um, dry, like I have the dry compartment for the Vitamix and I'll use that to grind my flaxseed or I'll just buy it already ground. Okay. Last but not least, I think, um, nut butter. So I like to add different nut butters. It doesn't really matter. I like to switch it up. So peanut butter, definitely fine. But if you don't want your whole smoothie tasting like a peanut butter smoothie, I wouldn't use peanut butter. Um, especially like if you have like more tropical fruit, it doesn't totally go. Um, so I like to use almond butter or cashew butter in particular. Um, to get those fats and it's going to be more of a mild flavor so you won't totally know that it's there. I recently got my mom to take me to Costco and they had this giant jar of mixed nut butter and I've been loving adding this. Um, it's got almonds and cashews which we talked about um, being good for a bunch of different micronutrients. Magnesium in particular um, and it also has pumpkin seeds another good one for magnesium, and chia seeds and flax seeds, so healthy fats. So I really like the breakdown of this, and it's pretty tasty. So I've been adding this to my smoothies, and you get a ton of it because it's Costco. Um, so I just add like a tablespoon or so. We're going to top it off, if I can find what I did with the lid, and open it up. And just start off slow if you have the ability, it just kind of blends better. chunks from the from the um, 
what did I add in there? That was weird. Cauliflower stems, um, which was my concern when I first added the cauliflower. It's like cauliflower in a smoothie, but it works. Okay, look at that pretty purple color from the blueberries. Cheers. Yeah, that's delicious and refreshing because it's so hot outside. So smoothie is done. Now, like this type of smoothie, if you were going to drink the whole thing that I was adding, definitely more um, can be like a larger snack or a meal, um, depending on your needs. So that's different for everyone, but you could also split it with someone and definitely have it as a component of a meal or as part of a snack. Um, because this had carbs, protein, and fat, um, it's got all of those micro or macronutrients that I'm looking for, so it can kind of be meal or snack. Some people don't like um, just a smoothie for a meal because they don't feel totally satisfied because that chewing can actually increase satiety. So, you know, having something alongside of it, like some eggs or whatever, um, can make it more of a rounded meal and help you feel more satisfied. Okay, so smoothie done. Now, I mentioned we're making quesadillas uh, today. So, ooh, I forgot something out of the fridge and I just dropped an avocado. Hold, please. Normally I have Clara to uh, take over when I need to run away for something, but it's just me today. So I'm making a vegetarian quesadilla, um, which I mean quesadilla in and of itself, tortilla and cheese is vegetarian, um, but I'm adding something that is really great for fertility. I mentioned beans a bunch of times with the micronutrients, um, particularly zinc and folate. Um, so I'm adding beans. So I have made some refried beans, um, actually very simple. They aren't technically refried, um, but on Sunday I stuck a bag of pinto beans into the Instant Pot. Didn't even need to soak it, which is so great. I used to do this in the crock pot. You had to soak it and then cook it all day. But now with the Instant Pot, it's done in like just a little over an hour. So pinto beans, a bunch of water, um, and what else I put? Onion, Mexican spices like cumin and uh, paprika and oregano and cayenne. Um, and you cook on the Instant Pot high pressure for 45 minutes and then let it naturally release for 20 minutes. From there you take out uh, most of the water. I'll, I either just scoop it out or I'll drain the beans into a bowl and then stick the beans back in the Instant Pot. And you use that immersion blender um, to just blend up the beans and adding a little bit more liquid to get your consistency that you want and you have refried beans. So tasty in quesadillas. I love it. Okay, so I'm using um, corn tortillas for the quesadillas today. Um, you can use flour, you can use grain free, um, it doesn't matter. Now corn tortillas, I have them so little so I like to make little like Half, like little half quesadillas. Um, I'll show you. So you have these little tortillas and I'll just like make little half ones and um, pan fry them like that. You can see this one, it just, it split as soon as I um, folded it over. So what I do is I actually, let me turn on the stove. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the tortilla and then I'm just gonna stick it on the pan. Um, over the heat and that heat will just kind of loosen it up so that I can bend it hopefully without breaking it so usually that works um, I have some avocado oil here actually before I do that I'm gonna get all my ingredients ready so quesadilla normally you could have cheese and tortilla um, I'm adding a few things I'm adding the refried beans I'm adding I don't know what that is <laughs> I'm adding avocado. This is one that I opened up yesterday, so it's looking a little rough, but that doesn't mean you can't eat it. So, avocado, bell pepper for some vitamin C. Why not? I have it in the fridge. Um, and cheese. So, I'm just gonna cut up this avocado. So, my knife. So, you, half of the avocado, when you cut it all the way around, 
um, and you separate it, one side's gonna have the pit in it. <laughs> it's so ugly. Um, how you get that pit out is you're gonna, I'm gonna show it to you, but not actually do it. You're going to smack it with the knife so that that knife gets lodged in the pit and then you turn it and it comes out. So I like to do it with the avocado on the cutting board so I don't like slice my hand. So got the pit and the avocado. Just throwing everything into the sink right now. So usually what I do is I take the knife and I kind of put little cuts in it. You could also mash this, it doesn't really matter. Slice it both ways and so now the avocado is already cut. Just get a spoon and you move your spoon through and just scoop out the innards and then they come out and they're already like chopped up for you. Yay, so easy. Okay, so I've got the avocado. The bell pepper I just sauteed a little bit earlier and I'm just using cheddar cheese because that's what I have. Okay, so I've got my pan. I have my tortilla. I'm going to just brush it with some oil and you could definitely assemble if you wanted to do the whole quesadilla, you could assemble and then put it on the heat. But like I said, I like to get it a little warm, sizzling, um, so that it folds better. And I, I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to scoop out some beans and stick it onto half of the tortilla. Just a little bit, because these are little tortillas. And I'm gonna sprinkle on some bell pepper. The beans will act as a glue, and then I'll put cheese on the top to act as an additional glue. Okay. A little bit of cheese. I may have overstuffed this a little bit. I was a little, uh, I don't know what the word is. <sighs> oh, okay, I'm just gonna show you this real quick, see if I can show this well. Okay, we've got the tortilla, and while this is just heating up, be careful, because that was hot. I just folded it over, whoop, where are we? There we are, and I'm just gonna press it down. Hard to do this on my own. Okay, gonna stick you back in the cabinet. Okay, cool. Um, so while that just heats up, I'm using a fairly large skillet so that I can do a second one while that one's cooking. All right. So you can use those refried beans um, in a lot of different ways. Um, my husband's using them in make ahead so we made a bunch of burritos ahead of time um, sometimes we'll just have them with rice or cauliflower rice um, for meal prep they're just really good and easy especially with the instant pot now okay, stick in the beans some bell pepper and you can definitely make this with a large tortilla um, I just, for some reason, I like these little corn guys. Okay, just a little bit of cheese. Okay, so avocado, healthy fat, beans for some of those micronutrients that we talked about. Um, you could definitely use different oils to put on the outside of the tortilla. Um, canola oil or um, butter. Um, I like to use avocado oil over olive oil here because I'm cooking at a fairly high temperature and olive oil kind of degrades it's not um, loses some of its health benefits when you cook it at a high heat um, so that's why I do a lot of avocado oil because it has a higher heat tolerance um, so I like to pan fry things in avocado oil a little bit more expensive um, but one of those things that I just have in the cabinet. Another thing about oils is you don't necessarily want to buy large jugs of oil, like at Costco. 
um, because the more you're opening it and introducing it to air and like pouring it into a smaller bottle or whatever, um, you're, that air is oxidizing the oil and that's not ideal. So I recommend getting the smaller bottles even though they're not as economical. So I will show you these as soon as they are golden brown on both sides. So I just flipped it real quick and I'm just kind of pressing down to make it go a little faster. Alrighty. I think that was pretty much everything. Um, we covered a lot. So if you miss anything or just want to see this in text version, go to our blog. We have that great um, fertility series up. Um, new blogs go up every Monday. Uh, next Monday we have a wonderful blog written about do I need to lose weight to get pregnant, which is a great question and I love the blog. So if that's a question you've had, go to the blog next week and see what the answer is. Okay, these look about done. I'm gonna get a plate. Alrighty. They're just these cute little quesadillas. Um, so there you can see quesadillas, so yummy, vegetarian, um, and then you can just see they've got all the goodies in there. Oh, yummy. They're too hot so I'm not going to eat it right this minute, but I promise you it is delicious. Refried bean quesadillas are my favorite. I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for all the questions, Paul. Uh, if anyone else has questions, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, we will see y'all next month. We're talking about inflammation, so also a great topic. All right. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Bye, guys.